Hello YouTube. Just wanted to put a video on here about uh, a project that I just finished. Uh, I just shellacked my vintage reissue blues deluxe amplifier. I haven't seen too many videos on here about this, uh, so I decided I'd put one of my own on here. Um, I have read several um, forums on this and tried a few different uh, compounds and, and came up with this one. Uh, so I thought I'd go through this and, and maybe go over some of the do's and don'ts, some of the things that I found uh, that were problematic. So uh, first off, I'm going to start off with <coughs> the uh, amplifier in the back is a Blues DeVille 410. Um, uh, you can see uh, this hasn't been finished at all, uh, how bleached out it is. And um, compare that to the... Um, shellac covering that I used on the uh, Blues Deluxe. Uh, it looks a little splotchy in the video but it actually isn't. I got two different uh, light sources coming in on this I'm trying to just light up the room a little bit. Um, it just depends on how you look at it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, um, so some of the problems I ran into uh, uh, hopefully I'll save you from doing that. Uh, I have read where some people tried to do the refinish without taking uh, any of the hardware off and taping it off. I guarantee you that if you use this substance that you'll definitely want to remove the hardware. It's watery and it's very difficult to control. Um, and you could possibly damage some parts too by letting this uh, get into your components. So. Um, so starting off, uh, I removed the hardware, I removed the handle, I took off the bolts to hold the top of the chassis <clears throat> in, uh, flipped the amplifier over, um, removed the back panel, I took off the um, uh, chassis bolts uh, on the side. Uh, when doing this, you want to be very cautious uh, of the voltage that is stored in the uh, filter capacitors. If you don't know anything about amplifiers, uh, they uh, have components in there that actually hold charges for weeks and months at a time. So it doesn't matter when you unplug this thing or turn it off, you shouldn't touch anything inside the chassis. <clears throat> that being said, um, I removed that using some uh, PVC gloves and also um, I didn't have any difficulty there. Uh, just uh, I did remove the power tubes. I didn't remove the preamp tubes because they're kind of small. The power amp tubes kind of stick out like a sore thumb, so uh, avoid maybe breaking one of those uh, by taking out the power tubes, and that's that's no problem at all. So um, I removed the rest of the hardware, the speaker grill, uh, the speaker, and everything. Uh, made it a lot easier. Once I finished uh, removing everything, I pl uh, flipped it over and turned and. Uh, replaced the feet of the amplifier uh, with drywall screws, about two and a half inch screws that I used to um, uh, set the amplifier up off the table a little bit. And by doing this I could uh, coat the bottom with a shellac and then flip it over and uh, I had uh, uh, plenty of air circulating underneath and I didn't have to worry about it sticking to anything. Um, the substance I used, I chose to use this time, was, it's called Zenzer Bullseye Shellac, and it's amber color. Uh, I got it at a local store, um, I live in a small town, so uh, this stuff was pretty expensive. If you get it from a big box store, you could probably save yourself some money. <clears throat> That's, it's uh, just a small amount, so uh, if you look at the size of the um, solo cup next to it, this this thing was 18 bucks okay um, pretty expensive so uh, I was told by the person that was uh, that the owner of the store that the sh uh, shellac is made from the dung of a shellac beetle which is apparently endangered right now so that's just the reason for the big jump in the price in shellac uh, sh shellac is thinned with denatured alcohol uh, 
I basically I poured um, about a quarter of this cup full of uh, shellac and then another quarter uh, of the denatured alcohol so you want to use a 50-50 solution and as I said before this stuff is very watery uh, it's, since it's an alcohol base it's just it's it's very difficult to control um, you will get pooling uh, keep a rag handy and it dries very quickly uh, you can come through after about um, three hours and and recover it again and get it in your second coat on it so be aware of that I used a, a natural fiber brush uh, it's a two inch um, the places where it pools is normally at the bottom uh, of the amplifier or at the bottom of where you're working. So you want to keep a rag handy and, and keep the denatured alcohol handy because you may have to um, uh, use that to thin out some spots. I want to show you some of the things that I ran into on the amplifier too whenever I was refinishing. Uh, the forms that I read, here are a couple of other examples of some stuff to use. I've used the poly shades. It's, um, it's a combination of uh, stain and polyurethane. It's really easy to use. Uh, problem is, uh, to get the desired effect, you need about eight to 10 coats. Um, and these are just a couple of different examples. Uh, the, the honey pine is what everybody recommends. The classic oak has got a little more, uh, a, a little darker hue to it. Um, you, you use whatever you want to use. I mean, uh, this stuff says not to recoat uh, within 24 hours so I mean if you got eight to ten days to go without your amplifier and and do that that's fine if you want to do it that way this might be a little more controllable than the shellac uh, but um, I'm impatient so I wanted to I wanted to get this thing done I was able to put my second coat on the on the amplifier using the shellac and the alcohol um, combination uh, I had I had the finished job done in a day, um, and then I let it cure, let it uh, dry for another 24 hours before I even thought about putting anything back in it. So, um, one of the things I ran into <clears throat> uh, when I was putting on this this is something I, I hope to save save some people some some problems. If you look at the seam on here, this is an overlap of the tweed. If you put your brush, if you just dip your brush in and, and dab it off and get anywhere close to that like I did with a fresh uh, brush of shellac, uh, if you look very close you'll see how that, I'm not sure if I can hide the light, you'll see how the shellac leached in behind or underneath the overlap. And it kind of makes a small mark. It's not it's not hugely noticeable, but if you get right on it, and it happened on both sides, and this one's a little, probably a little more noticeable than, than the other. I'll block some of that light, and you can kind of see. It's not that noticeable unless you get real close, but uh, just, just something that you might be aware of. So what I would suggest is after you get some of your shellac out of your brush, and then go get the areas close to the to the seam. It's pretty simple. And if you'll notice there are, there are seams in different spots like there. It happened right there also. And you can see it's kind of a small amount but it puts a it puts a nice coating of um, kind of a glaze on it. And um, I, I feel like it's going to protect it from dings and tears uh, as opposed to having the bare uh, tweed such as this. And this, I mean, it, this looks like it's going to just soak up every odor out there and every, every bit of liquid. I will tell you that uh, the forms say to be careful in uh, placing alcohol drink, alcoholic drinks on top of the amplifier because if there's any alcohol leaking down, we used alcohol to thin it and it will make a spot on top of your amplifier. Of course, some guys like that. Um, but it could remove some of the finish too. It will thin out the shellac enough that that can happen. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this helps some of you guys out there. Leave some comments, uh, good or bad, I don't care. And uh, I think it'll help some people uh, when they decide to, if they actually want to decide to do this. So um, 
See you later.